again. Can you hear me now? Yes, now you can hear me and see me. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much, Nellie, for that wonderful introduction. She and I have been trying to get all of the files uploaded, and hopefully the videos I have for you will work. If not, we are just going to make do. So, my name is Joan Kang Shin, and I'm very happy to be here with you today. I am in Maryland, not far from Baltimore, in a place called New Market, and I just moved into this house last week. So, this is my very first webinar presentation in this house. So, uh, I am very excited to talk about my very, very favorite topic about teaching English to young learners. And also, I'm really excited to share with you some of my tips for using songs to teach English to young learners. So for those of you who are already familiar with my work, you know that I love to use songs to teach kids English. So uh, let's begin uh, by just thinking about why songs are such a great way to reach our young learners. I love this quote. If a child can't learn the way we teach, hmm, maybe we should teach the way they learn. I think this is wonderful. It's very simple, but sometimes we do forget about that. We want our children to learn so many new things, uh, a lot of new content. We want them to learn how to speak more than one language. But we always have to think about the ways in which we try to teach our young learners. And of course, if what we're doing isn't working, well then, maybe we should see how they like to learn. So that's where we're going to begin. Because children love to learn through song. The first question that I have for you is, hmm, why is music important for teaching children? And I just mean in general, okay? When we just think about children as learners. Why is music important? I'd like you to type in your ideas into the chat box if you could. And I'm going to take a look and see what you have. Music has rhythm. Music is fun. Music supports movement. Thank you, Fern. I used to go in Turkey because they love rhythm. Yes. It's motivating. It's engaging. Svetlana says it's fun. Ah, Maria says to motivate them to deal with the new language. Charlotte says, we can dance to music. Absolutely. And who doesn't love to dance? Eliana, they love dancing and singing. Yes. Ah, and Rizwana says, make class interesting and productive. OK, now, if we just take a step back and just think about music, the benefits of it, particularly to children, Hi, Vera from Serbia. Yes, it's fun. <laughs> OK, um, let's start from the beginning. You're familiar with Howard Gardner's work with multiple intelligences, correct? Well, Gardner tells us that music is the first intelligence to emerge. And I find that very interesting. You know, when a child is born, OK, the first set of intelligence that develops is music. And it's also very connected to movement. And that is because of music and its connection to rhythm. Okay, So one thing that I want to impart is that, of course, music and rhythm, music and movement are inextricable. Right? They're connected. Even children, when they're 10 to 18 months old, they rock or bounce or clap their hands to the rhythm when you're singing to them. And so as a child develops, their connection to both music and rhythm grows. And they're able to also attach language to that. So uh, the first step is to realize that, OK, it's the first intelligence to emerge. There is a connection that children have to language. And I want to talk a little bit about the benefits for child development. Okay? And 
I'd like you to do an activity with me, just to warm up, okay? And I'd like you to re relax, and if you can, just close your eyes, okay? Can everybody close your eyes? I shouldn't see anything in the chat box. <laughs> and just take a deep breath in, and let your breath go, and I'm going to sing a song. And I just want you to see how the song makes you feel as I sing it. And then I want you to type into the chat box how you feel. So just relax. One more breath in. And let your breath go. And now just listen. Okay. You are my sunshine, my only sunshine. You make me happy when skies are gray. You'll never know, dear, how much I love you. Please don't take my sunshine away. Okay, you can open your eyes. Okay, and how did that song experience make you feel? Were you relaxed? I hope I didn't put you to sleep. Yes, relaxed, happy, safe, a little bit wistful, soothing, relaxed. Uh, feel secure, feels like home, calm. I'm so glad to hear you say that. This is actually the song that my husband and I sing to our kids every night before they go to bed. And we want them to know that we love them, want them to feel relaxed, comfortable, secure, just like all of you described. Okay, now I'm going to sing this song again, but I want you to clap along. Okay, everybody, okay, get your hands out. Get ready to use your hands. Are you ready? Okay, so I want you to clap along with me now. Ready? Go. You are my sunshine, my only sunshine. You make me happy when skies are gray. You'll never know, dear, how much I love you. Please don't take my sunshine away. Okay, were you clapping along? Tell the truth in your chat box. Yes, you were. Okay, and now how did you feel with the song? Alive. OMG, yes. <laughs> Energized, peppy, excited, energetic. Excellent. Okay, so music, the way in which we use it, okay, can change the mood. It's mood altering. And when we think about how we are using music with children, we have to remember there are all these effects, right? First of all, there's a psychomotor effect, and we know this. And you can see from the way I used the song, first soothing and relaxed, and then a little bit peppy with some rhythm and getting you to clap along and sing along. We can use it in many different ways, right? Because it can reduce stress. It actually can enhance the immune system. Okay, research show that it affects the heart rate and your blood pressure. It improves blood flow. Okay, so it has a lot of positive effects for us as humans. And for children, this is how it helps them to develop their bodies as well as their emotions. So there are, of course, emotional and social effects, right? It builds sensitivity for feelings. Think about the meaning of the song, that you are my sunshine, right? and then how much I love you. So when we use music, because it has this good feeling, it also weakens that effective filter and can help students be able to feel more comfortable in class or during the learning process, wherever that learning process may be. It is also a social activity, so it's getting you to clap along, but then you can sing along. And that's really what makes it you know, something that's enjoyable and motivating. In addition to that, there are also cognitive effects that maybe we don't think of. Okay, one thing for kids is it helps to develop 
their attention span, right? There's this beginning and ending to the songs. They start to learn that they need to, right, expand their attention, okay? If you know kids, they like to just interrupt you whenever you're talking about anything. <laughs> and so the songs, it helps them to stick with, right, the task. It also can help improve memory. So because of this connection to music and rhythm, okay, when we're teaching our students language, it helps them to remember the song, okay? And in addition to that, there's some um, uh, aspects of developing inner speech, meaning that when it's meaningful, right, and students are singing the songs, it can actually get them to connect sort of more intrapersonally with themselves. And in addition to that, it can work on impulse control. Like I said, it develops the attention span for students. And so it is sort of this length of the song that helps them to stay focused for a certain period of time, which is very important. Okay, so many, many benefits for child development. But what about specifically for language learning? We talked about it a little bit, okay? Now I want you to focus on a very popular song that many, many teachers around the world use to uh, teach English, and that is this song. Hey, it's, it's a family favorite, right? <laughs> oh, McDonald had a farm. Okay, so uh, I would like you to sing along with me if you can. Are you guys ready? Just to review goes like this. Oh, McDonald had a farm, E-I-E-I-O, and on his farm he had some cows, E-I-E-I-O, with a moo-moo here and a moo-moo there, here a moo, there a moo, everywhere a moo-moo. Oh, McDonald had a farm, E-I-E-I-O. Okay, so what are some different aspects of language that we're learning through a song like this? A very simple, traditional song. Oh yes, thank you, Beatrix. I love that connection of musical intelligence to linguistic intelligence. This is where we're at now, right? Oh, onomatopoeia, real language. Like the onomatopoeia, right? It, the word sounds like, okay, the word that it's describing, like the moo. It's in context that's right. Very good. Good. So children will retain vocabulary, also pronunciation. Ooh, long vowels of moo. We can't often do them well in Africa, where Charlotte's from. Mm -hmm. So it could help with pronunciation. Excellent. Repetition. Okay, so when we're talking about the benefits of language learning, you've hit many of these things. I mean, first of all, when we use a song like this, it's providing an authentic and meaningful context. Many people mention that. Okay, because Old MacDonald had a farm, it's a very traditional uh, American song, and it's used very often in other English-speaking countries. It introduces children to the target culture, meaning an English-speaking culture. I'm going to talk a little bit about that later. Also creates an enjoyable classroom atmosphere. It's super fun to be making the animal noises, moo, moo. And you know, we can go through all the animals, quack, quack for a duck, right? Nay, nay for a horse. It obviously provides opportunities to practice oral language through song. And in addition, many of you mentioned it, and this hits at what Vera just wrote and Maria wrote about repetition, that repetition, it aids in retention, okay? Um, and it also um, aids in comprehension. And so with comprehension, of course, we probably have to show the meaning of the animals, but the moo-moo helps to aid in comprehension, right? Because we're connecting it to the animal. Finally, it enhances literacy instruction. How does it do that? Well, of course, we're also working on the sounds of the language and the letters. So, for example, the E-I-E-I-O, right? And as we know, 
the songs help to build that phonemic awareness of the language. And so this particular song is wonderful in that because it's really pointing out some of these vowel sounds in English. Um, by the way, I want to point out in the chat box, Rizwan Abari said, music touches us emotionally where words alone can't. Hmm, by Johnny Depp. Very interesting. Thank you for that quote. All right. So with that in mind, we all really know the benefits of using songs for young learners and using music and songs in terms of developing our children. And now I want to get into some tips for using songs. Okay, I'm going to go through these five tips. And tip number one is very important. And we want to really use a rhythm as much as we can. And why? Because one, it could be a way that helps to develop fluency in the language. Also working on pronunciation and intonation. And we know that different languages have different rhythms. And so this can only help accentuate for our young learners how to be able to express themselves in another language. Okay, um, and that'll make it more comprehensible. And so I have some fun ways to be able to use rhythm that don't cost very much, that you can use even if you can't buy instruments, and that is to use recyclable things around you. Okay, so the first one is called keep the bead or keep the cans. Okay, and I'm going to reach over here. And of course, you can use like plastic cups, maybe you've used them already, you clean them out, okay, or recycled soda cans, it's a way to use trash in a positive way, okay, you can bring them to your classroom and have students, you know, use it to keep the rhythm, okay, so here you can see I'm just banging it right here on my table. and it helps to keep the rhythm of the songs. The other things that you can use, of course, are bottle maracas. So all I did was I just took a recyclable bottle and I put rice in it, okay? And, or you can use a container, okay? But you can see here, I just have some rice in here. I just use a plastic container in this case that I might use for food, okay? Or, again, put it in a recyclable bottle. This was some um, tea that I drank yesterday, okay? Makes a nice sound. Oh, well, you can also use uncooked beans, or in this one, I used Cheerios, just some cereal, okay? That was left over. I just took a little handful, and this one is a little more muted than the rice. Okay, so if you have a lot of students in your class, you might use something like this. The students can keep the rhythm, but it's not too loud. Okay, so this was the cereal, right, the Cheerios. And again, this is the rice. You can see the difference. Okay, um, you can also use uncooked pasta, whatever it is. Yeah, I love it. It's really fun. Nelly, we can have a band. Why not? Okay, the other thing is, of course, just box drums, and you can use any kind of recycled shoe box. Here I have a little box. Okay. I just told you I just moved, so I have boxes all around this house. And you can just use an unsharpened pencil, okay, or a ruler. All right, so. I want you, I don't know where you are, are you at home? I want you to just look around you or go to your kitchen and I want you to either get a drum, get a cup or can. I would like you to go get one because I want you to keep the rhythm in this next song, okay? All right, so go get something. I'm going to give you 10 seconds to get your instrument. Okay, any one of these. Ready? 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Do you have your instrument? Okay, Nellie's ready. Eliana's ready. Sanja's ready. Carla's ready. 
Naima, Beatrix, Maria. Okay, so I'm going to teach you a song with, you know, one of my songs from Welcome to Our World. So Welcome to Our World is a, a series for um, English language students who are from three to five years old. And in that uh, book series, we use songs that come from around the world. This song is originally from Tunisia, okay? And so I'm going to use my drum, okay? And I'm going to have you just repeat after me, okay? We're just going to say it first. I have a ball and it's the best. Now go ahead, say it with me. I have a ball and it's the best. One more time. I have a ball and it's the best. Okay, and then the next line that's different is, I like my ball, it's blue and red. Now you say it. I like my ball, it's blue and red. And the last one goes with a yeah. I have a ball and it's the best. Yeah, I have a ball and it's the best. Yeah. Okay. I already see somebody loves this song, Sarah Brito Gomez. All right. Now we're going to sing it. It goes like this. I have a ball and it's the best. I have a ball and it's the best. I like my ball. It's blue and red. I like my ball. It's blue and red. I have a ball and it's the best. Yeah, I have a ball and it's the best. Yeah. And of course, we have some other toys you can see in the picture, right? I have a doll. It's yellow and blue. I have a truck. It's yellow and red. All right. So, um, Nelly, I wonder if you could help me by finding the video that's called I Have a Ball. And if it's possible, play it. If not, it's all right. Okay. All right, so how did you all like the song? Hmm. All right, let's just sing another verse. I'm going to use something else this time. Okay, I'm going to actually use my cup because we're going to use this as a passing game. Okay? All right, so if you have a cup, you can use this. Okay, and let me show you. It goes like this. I have a ball and it's the best. I have a ball and it's the best. I like my ball, it's blue and red. I like my ball, it's blue and red. I have a ball and it's the best. Yeah, I have a ball and it's the best. Yeah. All right. So the passing cup game, it's a video I can't show you right now, okay? But you can look it up online, okay? It, there's a YouTube video, and I can show you how to find that. And with this game, you actually are passing it. Yes. I just figured out what we, yes. what we did wrong. Those uh, files that we added can be shared with the participants. They can grab them. What you need to do is you need to go into the, uh, the top where it says pad yep. uh, and add the um, the files to under uh, share and then document and that's where they should appear and this is the one that we added last time and it's there so that's just oh okay I got you you got all right anyways I'm really enjoying this and I'm sure everybody else is too okay. and I just you know, it would be nice if we could all be doing this together. I just wanted to share what I'm doing here, you know, with my uh, sure. <laughs> Apple. So there, you know, everybody can do this. It's a lot of fun. And um, we can share, you know, other people can come up and share what they're doing and maybe sing along. Okay, so I'm going to go back to my presentation. Okay, here we go. And this is, by the way, the video for uh, to pass the cup, okay? So one way you can make it more interesting is if students are sitting in a circle, 
you can actually hit it twice and then you pass your cup, right? And then that also means that the person next to you pass their cup to you, okay? So it's like one, two, pass, okay? And then you get one, one, two, pass. So the idea is you're in the circle, as you can see on the picture, and you're passing it, you know, one next to the other. It makes it a little bit more interactive. Okay, so that's not a video I can show you right now, but again, it's just another game to keep the rhythm and make the experience more interactive. All right, now, uh, the next tip is to use well-defined gestures and movements. Okay, now I know teachers like to use gestures, and I know teachers love to use movement when they're using songs, but I do have to say, that in many, many classes that I've visited around the world, because I've really had the privilege to be able to visit many teachers, classrooms, and see how they teach, and they, they're all wonderful. But one missed opportunity that I've seen often is that teachers don't utilize the gestures enough, meaning they're not using them in a very well-defined way to help students understand the language better, and then also just to engage them a little bit more. So, for example, um, you know, you can, of course, use uh, gestures for different vocabulary words. Of course, it's going to help to teach the vocabulary. The other thing, of course, is kids love to have something to do, and it encourages student participation. Many classes that I visited, you will see the teacher singing, and then the teacher's like doing some movement like this, just dancing, and you see students imitating the teacher. Well, why not take advantage of their desire to follow you by defining certain gestures that are going to help them to understand the language better and remember it better, okay? So it not only just encourages them to participate, it's not just that they're kinesthetic learners and like to move around. We want to actually use it for the language learning, okay? It also can encourage student creativity, and I'll show an example of that. Um, it helps you as a teacher to check comprehension of vocabulary, right? So if students aren't using the right gesture at the right time, then you know that they didn't quite understand the word. Finally, it aids in retention. And I can't emphasize this enough about how our bodies and our movement are so connected to um, how we remember things. So, if, for example, you know, I'm going to tell you a little bit about um, my research in international children's songs. And when I was trying to discover about all different songs that people are using in all different countries around the world, I asked my mom, who's from uh, South Korea, you know, what was her favorite song when she was a young child? And what I found was that she was excited, she was very happy to share it with me, and she started to sing the song. Okay. Uh, do you want to hear the song? It's in Korean, so I don't know if everyone will understand it. All right, so, okay, yes. All right, the song, it goes like this. And this is my mom singing it, okay? She was very excited. It goes, it's about a mountain rabbit, okay? It goes like this. San toki toki ya, ojiru ganen ya, gong. And then when she got to the second verse, she couldn't remember the words. I mean, my mom's like 70-something years old. It's been a long time. So she was trying to figure it out. And then her hand went like this, did a movement. And then she remembered the next uh, verse, right? And the next verse was about the mountain tops okay and so she remembered through her body movement first before she remembered the words of the song and to me that was just a very poignant moment where I realized the power of body movement for retention and for connecting to the meaning of the language this is why it's just so important that you connect the meaning of the words with the movement, but that is also meaningful to students. And then it'll help them to remember 
the words as well as the song way down in the future. Okay, so um, I would like to, uh, if it's possible, to play this video. Um, Nelly, the weather song demo in file 10. Are you able to download that and play that, I wonder? Or can I share my screen? Let me just share my screen. Okay, then I can play the video for you. No, not this one. Can you see? Good, it's cloudy. And now, what's the weather like today? Right, it's rainy. And how about this? What's the weather like today? Yes, it's snowy. And finally, what's the weather like today? Good, it's windy. So, now that you know how to ask and answer about the weather, now we can sing the song. So, it's very easy. The tune is to Oh My Clementine. So, just try and sing along with me. Ready? What's the weather? What's the weather? What's the weather like today? Tell us, Johnny, what's the weather? What's the weather like today? Is it sunny? Is it cloudy? Is it rainy out today? Is it snowy? Is it windy? What's the weather like today? What's the weather like, Johnny? Right, it's sunny today. Well, I hope you enjoyed the weather song. Okay, I take it that you couldn't see the video, am I right? Am I right that you couldn't see the video? Okay, let me, let me just try this one more time. Let's see if you can, can I share my screen with you. Okay. Okay, that's okay. Um, you can still hear and see me, am I right? Of course, yes. Okay, so um, the video was, of course, of the weather song, and aha, there you go. Thanks, Sanja, for giving the link. One of the things I want to emphasize with the song is, and you know, the song, of course, it goes like this. You can see me sing it now, right? It goes like this. What's the weather? What's the weather? What's the weather like today? Tell us, Johnny, what's the weather? What's the weather like today? Is it sunny? Is it cloudy? Is it rainy out today? Is it snowy? Is it windy? What's the weather like today? Okay, so the point is, of course, a very simple one, which is that the gestures, right, are supposed to show the meaning of the words. That is, of course, going to aid in comprehension of the words for your young learners, but also aid in retention. And it also just makes it more fun. Okay, so that's really the point here. Now, I want to show you um, something else which I think will work, okay? And I want you to take a look at um, this video right here. And I'm sure it's going to work. It's got to. Yeah, uh, Joan is adding a file, so uh, there's no audio at the moment. Um, as soon as the, the uh, file is up, 
the MP4 will get um, sound back again. Technology is really behind our needs as teachers, I find. Um, she'll be back. So how, what age groups um, do you teach? If you could just add that in the chat. You teach very, very young learners. What ages? 7 to 11. 3 to 7. Yeah, that's what I was looking for. It must 2 to 10. Wow. It must be so exciting to teach young learners. I mean, I teach high school. so um, But I used to teach young learners. I know it's a lot of fun. Um, as teachers, because we, be oh, you're back. Great, Joan. So let me just uh, give you back your hosting rights. Okay, there we go. You got it. So, Joan, you should have, um, okay, yeah, you I see you coming now? in. Yes, yes. It must be so exciting to go back and forth like this. Uh, you got kicked out, I guess, uh, as you were trying to um, upload. Yes. So I'm not yeah. going to upload any more videos. The lesson learned is if it doesn't work I out two, three I times, think, you know then what? you have I really to. Think, I really think that you're enough. You don't need any technology. You're doing so great with the singing, with everything. We've got you live, you know, um, and yeah. you're better than anything else. So thank you. Yeah. So, you know, actually, the, the video I wanted to show you was of these children in Taiwan who were singing the weather song. And what I loved was that they chose their own gestures because, you know, gestures can be very culturally based, right? So here I am, I'm using like this to mean sunny, okay? But in other countries, this doesn't mean sunny, okay? So, for example, I was in Brazil, and what do you think people said? I said, what is this? the weather, and I expected them to say sunny, but instead they said rainy. And I was completely confused for a second until I realized that, oh, yes, I see there is Maria de Luz de Silva, right? Rainy, because, you know, it's raining down, right? Okay, so you need to get under something like an umbrella, I suppose. And so... When you think about the fact that, one, gestures are culturally based, you might use one of my videos to teach a song, but you might also have students choose their own gestures that are more meaningful to them. It also gets students to be able to be more creative to come up with their own gestures, okay? And that'll help them to be more motivated. So you ask them, what does it look like when it's rainy? And if they use this instead of my gesture like this, that's even better. Okay, now, one warning though, is that when you ask students, how do you show rainy or how do you show windy? Okay, sometimes they'll come up with their own different ways. Then you should really select one gesture for use with the song. Okay? and that everybody will agree to use when you sing the song. Otherwise, it's too confusing. And you want to have sort of a one gesture selected for one word in order to keep the meaning consistent, right? And then you can use it in other contexts, okay? So if I'm saying like, you know, um, talking about something else being windy, right, or something, you know, one another in another context, there's a day that's sunny, and I'm trying to cue students to tell me the word, okay, then I can use a gesture, okay, say for windy, and then they'll be able to recognize what I'm talking about, okay, so it's very important to let them choose their own gestures, but then you select one and you keep it consistent. Here were the students in Taiwan, the video I was going to show you, can you guess what this gesture is supposed to show, <laughs> it's actually, yeah, let me see what you say. <laughs> yeah, you're right. I should go from Turkey. They, they were trying to show sunny. That's so sunny that they have to cover their eyes. All right. Tip number three. Okay. We want to make practice and repetition fun. Repetition is very important when teaching young learners. 
customers. If you don't try to create some variety with the repetition and make it meaningful, then it can get really boring. Okay? So, yeah, kids love to repeat. That's true. And if they love the song, they're going to keep asking you to sing it again and again, probably more than you want to sing the song, but it shows you that they're engaged. Now, there's some games that are related to tempo and related to volume that are fun and can also help you to manage your class as well. So the tempo games, you can switch up the tempo. And this also helps with fluency as well as pronunciation. When you speed it up, okay, it can help with fluency. When you slow it down, it sometimes helps you to put some attention to certain aspects of pronunciation. Okay, so uh, the other thing is it is just fun and it's a fun way to repeat. So let's try one. Okay, and of course I'm going to stand up and sing. Are you going to stand up and sing with me? Okay, I'm going to come back here and see if I can sing this. You all know this song, right? So let's just sing it once together, right? Head, shoulders, knees and toes, knees and toes. Head, shoulders, knees and toes, knees and toes. Eyes and ears and mouth and nose. Head, shoulders, knees and toes, knees and toes. And of course you can speed it up and speed it up and we can do it faster. Ready? Head, shoulders, knees and toes, knees and toes. Head, shoulders, knees and toes, knees and toes. Eyes and ears and mouth and nose. Head, shoulders, knees and toes, knees and toes. Faster! Head, shoulders, knees and toes, knees and toes. Head, shoulders, knees and toes, knees and toes. Eyes and ears and mouth and nose. Head, shoulders, knees and toes, knees and toes. Okay, are you warmed up? Now, we're going to do it super slow motion. Ready? Head, shoulders, knees and toes. Knees and toes. Head, shoulders, knees and toes. Knees and toes. Eyes and ears and mouth and nose. Head, shoulders, knees and toes. Knees and toes. Okay, how did that feel? Okay, so. You can see how if you speed it up, speed it up, you can work on some aspects of fluency. And notice when we did the super slow motion, you were really enunciating the words. So for example, if the sounded mouth is a problem, right, for your students. I know that in Korea sometimes I'd have to tell my students, okay, put your tongue in between your teeth. You can practice that, right, with mouth. The super slow-mo then helps to put attention to certain aspects of pronunciation that might be difficult. The other thing is um, it's also really good to speed up and slow down when you have different levels of students because you might speed up and speed up, but some students may not be able to do it as quickly so it's always good through a game to be able to change the speed, not make it so obvious, but be able to provide opportunities for lower level students to keep up and to practice um, their oral fluency and pronunciation. Okay, now of course the other type of game deals with volume, quiet down, even Okay, and so you can do it with the fun game that seems to be very active, right? Like the hokey pokey. You put your right hand in, you put your right hand out, you put your right hand in and you shake it all about. You do the hokey pokey and you turn yourself around. That's what it's all about. And then you have to quiet it down in the whisper. Put your left hand in, you put your left hand out. You put your left hand in and you shake it all about. Do the hokey pokey and you turn yourself around. That's what it's all about. And then you can even mouth the words. You read my lips, okay?
Okay, so that's not even singing. You're just mouthing the words. But just like in the slooper slow-mo, when you're mouthing the words, it's actually getting you to practice some pronunciation, right? Because you're paying attention to what your lips and your tongue and your mouth is doing. Okay, yes. As Beatrix said, kids will want to do it over and over again, and these are fun games to use with kids. Now, um, the other thing is you want to provide them opportunities to personalize. Of course, this helps students connect to new language and content to their lives. It encourages student participation. It encourages student creativity. It also checks comprehension of vocabulary and aids in retention. If they connect it to themselves and their lives, they're going to remember it better, right? So just for example, it's so easy to do this with songs. Remember, I have a ball, and it's the best, right? Well, maybe they use their own toy. Like here's a toy that my son Finn has. Oh my gosh, it's a truck, right? And if you have students bring in their favorite toy, they could just bring it in and sing the song. I have a truck, and it's the best. I have a truck and it's the best. I like my truck, it's yellow and black. I like my truck, it's yellow and black. I have a truck and it's the best. Yeah, I have a truck and it's the best. Yeah. So you see how easy it can be to personalize it and you can have students share their favorite toys. I know my kids love to bring their toys to school for show and tell to share it with other students. All right, last tip. We're getting to the end of our time together. But the last tip is that we really want to integrate songs from other cultures. And I mentioned at the beginning one of the aspects of language learning that is really wonderful about using songs is that you are sharing the target culture, okay? But this notion of target culture has expanded because English is a global language, right? People all over the world are learning and using English, people from all different countries and cultures, and so it's really a good idea to be able to use songs that not just come from the United States or the UK or Canada, we should be using songs that come from any and all countries around the world. Now, that's not so easy because you may not know so many songs from different countries, but that is the basis for what I call the international children's song approach. We're using songs and melodies from other cultures and we create an English version for students to use. So it's a way to learn English while being able to share a culture. And so, when I was using the International Children's Song approach, when I was developing it, I started to do research about um, children's songs that come from all these different cultures around the world. And what I found was that all of these songs had certain things in common, right? What do you think these children's songs around the world had in common? I, I found songs from over 50 countries. Imagine the themes. Yes, the themes. There were lots of songs about like animals and nature, the joy. Yes. Actually, so some of the songs were very joyful and happy. And there were some, you know, darker songs, you know. <laughs> they were short and catchy. They're fun. There's repetition, fun rhythms, they're colorful. Rhythm, simple tunes, great topics for everyday life, sure. Okay, and repetition. Mm -hmm. Okay, you pretty much got them all. So here you can see that the traditional songs had certain things in common, right? They tended to be short and repetitive. They had simple melodies and they often rhymed. They were catchy and easy to remember, time tested, have engaged children for generations, so they've like gone from generation to generation. They have corresponding body movements that develop children's motor skills, and they introduce children to the world around them in a developmentally appropriate way that helps them learn language and content simultaneously. And isn't that what we're trying to do in the classroom? And so 
you know, one of the songs I found, I'm not going to play the video, but one of the songs I found was from Turkey. And the title of it was Alibaba Has a Farm. That's if I just do a direct translation of it. And I was like, huh, I had this moment where I thought, why? Why do we always teach about farm animals in English using Old MacDonald and his farm? Why can't we use Alibaba and his farm to teach about farm animals? Yes, from Turkey, yes. <laughs> I should go from Turkey. So why not? Okay, here's how the song goes. And it has its own melody that's different from Old MacDonald. Okay, it goes like this. Ali Baba, he has a big farm. On his farm there are seven cows. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven cows. Moo. All on Ali Baba's big farm. Okay, so we created an English adaptation, which is in my book series, Welcome to Our World. And we have songs from all different countries, but adapted into English and connected, right, to the curriculum in the book. And so to me, it's an amazing way to be able to teach English while teaching about other cultures. And so, you know, we actually went to Turkey, you know, you saw some kids here and we recorded the kids singing the original song in the original language as well as the English adaptation so that children around the world who use this program can actually see and hear children from different countries singing the song, hearing different languages, and then getting to participate by singing an English version of the song that they can understand. Okay, so, um, Again, these are songs around the world, um, and it comes from my book series, but please, I'm still looking for new songs and still engaging in this research where we're looking for songs that come from all different cultures. I would love to hear from you. And of course, another simple way that you can also use uh, this type of approach is to just use familiar international music. And what I think is really lovely is that if it's very familiar with kids, you can use it for things like classroom management to um, use songs in order to help you to start a certain activity or end a certain activity. Okay, so in this case, this classroom management song is a hello song and it uses a very familiar international tune. Okay, I'm going to sing it and you tell me if you know the song. It goes like this. Hello, how are you? Hello, how are you? Hello, hello, how are you? I'm very good, yeah, I'm very good, yeah. Thank you very much, and you. Ah, you know the song, La Cucaracha, right? La Cucaracha, La Cucaracha, Ya no puedo caminar. Okay, so uh, let's all sing it together. You want to sing along with me? Yes, here we go. Ready? Hello, how are you? Hello, how are you? Hello, hello, how are you? I'm very good. Yeah, I'm very good. Yeah. Thank you very much and you. Excellent. It's a great way to start the day in a fun way. It's a great classroom management song. All right. And so the last song I want to give you is another classroom management song to a very popular tune, okay? And it's a song that you can use to say goodbye. This is me saying goodbye to a classroom in Mexico that I was working with in Puebla. And so when you say goodbye, sometimes it's very sad because it's time to go and you don't want to go. And for us and this webinar, it's also time to go. And so let me just teach you this goodbye song. And it's to the tune of uh, London Bridge. Okay, it goes like this. Goodbye, it's time to go, time to go, time to go. Goodbye, it's time to go, see you later. Here we go.